Good morning, family. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this mental house that we have, you know. And we call it that, y'all, because it's so crazy, right? It's crazy when you have a whole nation that has been built on gaslighting, projection, narcissism, and... And are unwilling and unable to accept their role in and their part of continuing the gaslighting, the narcissism, the projection, the lies, the it, and it's really really sad when you have a segment of the population that it finds it so hard to swallow. The truth. You know, not, you know, because the truth is hard. It's like a horse peel going down. Most of the time, you have to take a little bit at a time. You can't just, you, sometimes it's, it's just so unforgiving, in other words. That's what the truth is. And a lot of times people can't handle that. However... When they come from a privileged group, they always expect everybody else to be beat down, to be made to held accountable. Oh, oh, you're doing wrong, and you you need to be held accountable. You need to be punished. But you are unwilling to even hear the sins of your past that lead you right into the present. Now, that has got to be some fundamentally crazy behavior if we were to examine it, right? It's past cluster B, and it's way out of the DSM. For you to sit there and make a book about what characteristic depicts uh, what behavior, but yet and still we are unable to fix this race problem here in America. That you created. We didn't create it because we're just kidnapped victims. Those of us who have had to bear witness to your madness had to be subjected to it. Uh, it has been horrible. I'm sorry, you guys. I had to pause that very important phone call. That was my doctor. Um. Anyway, this is a, a a story that shows you just how intertwined we are uh, as humanity and as a human family, and then just so out of touch that some of y'all want to remain in terms of not allowing history to be taught, uh, not wanting to face your cruel and insane history, not to make you bitter, but to make you better. But yet and still, you want everybody else to suffer and have to uh, face the penalties for their infractions. That can no longer go on, just not even on the scale of the universe. Is that going to continue to keep working? You you didn't got away with it for 400 some years. It's about time you understand that equality is not oppression. Okay? it's You feel like it's the oppression for you because you don't want to share equality. Well, civil rights activists are now seeking to draw attention to an 1882 rape that ended with black teenage victims dying in prison. Uh, a black teenage victim dying in prison while her white attacker dead and three men lynched. Margaret Vinegar was just 14 when two families of friends came across her. Oh, I shouldn't even have said that. I said the wrong word. Anyway. I hope this wouldn't pass a certain amount of time. Margaret Vinegar was 14 when two families came across her being 
assaulted actually under a downtown Lawrence Bridge in Kansas City, in Kansas, and intervened. The body of her attacker, David Balsman, a farmer in his 40s, was later found in the Kansas River, the Lawrence Journal World reports. Arrests ensued, and a mob broke into the jail, hanging the two friends, Isaac King and George Roberson, as well as Margaret's father, Pat Vinegar, who was not even in town on the day that happened. Margaret was later convicted of murder, tried on a story that she had enticed her attacker under the bridge so her friends could rob him, said Lawrence uh, NAACP member Carrie Altenberg, who added that some also accused her of prostitution. That's what she was tried on and not the truth. But that story, Altenberg said, that's the, what they tried her on. Not the truth, but that story. Um, Ursula Minor, president of the Olive Lawrence Branch of the NAACP said that because of her race, Margaret Vinegar was neither seen as a child nor the victim that she was. During that era, most black women and girls could not refuse advances of white men, Minor said. In 2019, the Lawrence Branch of the NAACP has worked with the Equal Justice Initiative which created a national lynching memorial in Montgomery, Alabama to commemorate the 1882 lynching and even events surrounding it. Last year, on the 140th anniversary, a historical marker was erected at the site of this lynching. Now the coalition is proposing a second marker in remembrance of Margaret and her plight. Margaret died of tuberculosis in the state penitentiary in Lansing at the age of 20 while her attorney sought a pardon for her. Because it is unclear what happened to her body, the coalition has proposed that her marker be placed near the site of her trial in downtown Lawrence. A historic commission has signed off on the marker and the next step is for the Lawrence City Commission to vote on it. The activists hope to dedicate the marker on June 10th, the 141st anniversary of the lynching. Um, you know, I mean, while that's great that she is being acknowledged, and I don't want nobody to take this, you know, the wrong way, um, you know, but we really good for making markers and headstones and um, all kinds of plaques that commemorate lives, but we don't do the work that it takes to truly make those events meaningful. We just don't. You know, we, we don't mind putting up statues. But yet we won't pass a George Floyd um, uh, Truth in uh, Policing Act. This is insane. We keep wanting to give an impression and a delusion that everything and all is fair. And all is good. But it's not. And without disrespecting the dead, my dead ancestor. I think that she even would want something in her memory to be better served like making it a crime um, more than a crime if police or civilians are involved in this kind of mayhem and debauchery against black people. It's the only thing. It's the only thing. 
okay? And um, because it's coming, it's coming. And um, either you're going to go willingly or you're going to be forced. But it's coming. The day of reckoning You don't really want to face it because you're too big of cowards. Anyway, with that being said, if you like what you hear, what you think about that story? Um, I never heard of this teen, this child before, um, and I never heard of her story. Margaret Vinegar, who was just 14 years old and was graped. Um, by two men and then had the mob drag her rescuers out of the prison. Interesting story. It's a whole bunch of them like that, y'all. And you can't hide it and run from it. You got to face it head on and deal with it. Go through the pain of it so y'all can heal. Because, see, one thing about us, we have to deal with it. Ain't no sticking our heads in the sand about the situation. Whether it's lies or truth, we got to deal with it. And I invite you to do the same. The truth is very healing. It's very healing. And it hurts, but it also heals. What y'all think about that? With that being said, if you like what you hear, subscribe. To the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.